Our last panel. As you can see, my voice is not holding up, and it's my panel. So here we go. Can we bring up our panelists here for our AI, machine learning, and automation panel? Come on up, you guys. Just, just sit down. There should be a microphone on each one of these. Grab a spot. Make yourself comfortable. I'm going to use this water if you don't mind. <clears throat> when Mike and all of our incredible SEs and myself and a handful of others were sitting down and talking about topics, what the data from our strategists told us we needed to talk about, we had a fist fight about whether we were going to do a panel on AI. Right? Um, is this real? I think it's come up a couple times throughout the day. This is one of those conversations where you know, the customer kind of asks for something and they don't really know what the hell they're asking for at the end of the day. Hey, can I get AI from you? I'm not really sure what that means right? at the end of the day. What we're hoping to do here on this panel, gang, um, and do it in a way that's sort of effective and not super deep from a technical perspective is just get into a little bit of real world kind of what's happening in the space. Um, we have our panelists here. We're, I'm just going to run down the line here. Um, we don't need to look at, at the uh, slide. Why don't we just start left to right, sure. run down. Two seconds, who you are, what you do there? Yeah, Alan, Alan Moya, Director of Product Marketing at Sockdesk. Let me see real quick. Is there, is there a red button on? Yeah, just press that. Technology. Yeah. Alan Moya, Director of Product Marketing. I'm in marketing, so technology. Uh, and I've been with Sockdesk for a little over a year and a half, and I live in San Jose, California, which was 117 degrees last week. Jeff Reimer, Global Vice President of Sales Engineering at Dialpad. Been at Dialpad for six years. Uh, been in the industry for 30, so glad to be here. Uh, Jason Wyant, uh, Vice President of Contact Center Sales for North America, the UK, and EMEA for Ring Central. Tony Poor, I run our sales engineering for the channel globally. Red button, is it red? Let's press that in there, make sure it's red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Karim. Uh, so in the last 12 years, I've been helping uh, customers and partners uh, to adopt and to drive um, contact center, cloud contact center technology, focusing on CRM and AI integration. And I'm part of Bonajo. Fantastic. Well, look, I don't know when the term AI actually got coined. Um, I like to think Isaac Asimov did with iRobot, but it started, it became popularized in the 50s. And the folks that coined the phrase back then thought that we were going to have a sentient computer within a generation. Well, it hasn't happened. Um, but I think we think Hollywood filled in the gaps, maybe, right? So we got decades of movies about dystopian futures with ill-tempered robots looking to take over the world. You know, here we are, my personal favorite. This movie really jammed me up on this one. Um, I, I, frankly, I wasn't sure if I actually was real the first week after I watched The Matrix. Uh, but here's the reality of the situation, all right? Um, the media loves it. These aren't articles from the last 30 years. These are articles from the last 30 days about whether a, we're all going to die from a computer at some point in the future, right? So let's start with the easy part of this conversation, all right? If you guys look at this slide, you can see it here. We flashed it up a bunch of times. Everybody in the audience seen it already. The second highest piece of content that our strategists wanted to learn here in these sessions was about AI and robotic process automation. Um, primarily because of customers who were saying to them, I want AI. Okay, I really don't know what that means, <laughs> right, at the end of the day. So let's just, and yet, you know, statistics will tell you that the positive feeling about um, artificial intelligence has gone up significantly in media over the last couple of years, right? So I think we're in this spot, but let's just kind of ring it around the, 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 the group here. Um, are we at a point where we're beyond 30 years of dystopian futures? Are we having real AI conversations at this point? Let's go there first before we get into the use cases. Yeah, I could certainly I can start with that. And I think we are beyond that point. Yeah. Um, I think AI has been for years has been a mystery to many. It's like you said, contact centers, other businesses come and say, we need AI, but they don't really understand why they need it. They just know they need it. Um, but if we take the contact center use case specifically, there are a number of challenges that a contact center is facing where AI can really add value 
and relatively quickly, as a matter of fact. And the good news is that AI has become relatively simple to implement now, whereas several years ago it was a lot more complex, it required data scientists, and so on, and that really, and it was expensive. So that was um, already a barrier for a lot of adopt yep. when it comes to adoption. So when it, when it comes to contact centers, they're, they're, dealing with, they're still dealing with staffing shortages. It's a skills shortage, right? Yep. And it's ongoing. They're dealing with higher call volumes. They're dealing with more complex co customer conversations, digital interactions. They're also dealing with cost containment, and they're trying to, um, to optimize the customer experience. You can do all of this with AI. It's the only way to do it. And it's AI across the board. You mentioned robotic process automation, yep. chat automation, voice automation, but also being able to assist agents and also optimizing your workforce so that your agents, you have your best agents available and that they are doing the best work that they can do to offer the best customer experience. Gotcha. Hold there for a minute. We're going to toss it around um, on the top level question, which is, are we, are we at a point where the conversation is real? We're going to come back to how we're using it in a second, but anybody else want to jump on there? These are real conversations? Yeah, I'll mention it, um, and thank you. All the things you were talking about, and you mentioned earlier, what, what is AI? Yeah. Well, conversations are real. The problem that we see a lot of times, and what you may see when you're out talking to your prospects and clients is, which real do you want? Because we do get a lot of, well, do you have AI? Yes. <laughs> uh, explain what you're looking for. And so whether it be a, a customer interaction, an employee interaction, an agent interaction, a search you know, preference, there's, there's so many different topics that's really um, incumbent upon you uh, when you're working with, your, you know, with, with us as manufacturers, with your customers, to really dig in that discovery and find out what does it mean. Because there are... Yep. It's back, AI, machine learning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That, that's the way that you can best you know, focus in on, on the client needs and, and what they're looking for, whether it be revenue generation, uh, cost containment, et cetera, and how you can best fit their needs. You know, uh, gosh, six, eight years ago, we cloud washed everything, where we as a service to everything, right? Are we in the same boat with AI right now? Are, are we calling anything that is a little bit of intelligence in a system artificial intelligence at this point? Yeah, I, yes. I think this is really where we see a lot of confusion. Uh, when yeah. we speak to customers, everyone talk about AI machine learning, and sometimes it's not. And I, I think there is a lot. Our job is really to educate our customers, to help them understand what's real AI. And to your point, you mentioned it, it's also finding the great use case. AI is not going to solve every problem. That's not going to happen. I think that's the misunderstanding that we see that, oh, okay, I have AI, I'm going to solve everything. No, that's not the case. Start simple, identify the use case, but yeah, be realistic also first. So we're definitely calling everything AI these days. Anybody else want to lump on that, that conversation? Maybe the panelists we have in I was going to make yet. a joke, either AI or a bot. Like, I yeah, know, I, I, know I, I need I a bot. Are, okay. yeah. are we overusing it? As of a course we're right overusing now? it. We yeah. use it for everything. But it, it is. It's real. And it, where we were two, three years ago when we were first bringing out AI, it was a wow factor. People were amazed at what they were seeing, but there was no use cases for them or how, how they're going to use it. And I think as everybody has set up here, it's really about finding those functional use cases within a customer, within an environment where contact center users, business users can all use those, those applications and use them to better themselves, to better their prospects and to sell more. Got it. Can you, you want to lay on the confusion uh, issue? Well, it's the, the question that, I, that we get is like, what do you do with AI? And it's like asking, what do you do with the internet? <laughs> totally. Like everything. Like yeah. It's part of, I can't speak for everybody's platform, but we're probably on the same boat. It's not like there's a, a skew for AI, yeah. right? It's a core part of the platform that infuses everything that we do. And until everyone in the ecosystem understands that, we're going to have these confusing discussions around, sure? oh, like I, I think it's a, like you go buy it off the shelf like it's a gallon of milk. That's not how it works. At 100%. How many RFPs do you see that say, do you support AI? All of them. It's like, <laughs> describe oh, well, I mean, what you do with AI. Almost everybody up here, I believe everybody does has a, has a contact center solution as part of their suite. And you know, for years you're answering the, here's your RFP, you go down, you know, do you do bots? It's like the same kind of question. You're like, well, you know, and the question is, okay, we'll get there in a minute. Do you even have a knowledge management system to inform a bot? What's that? Well, then you're not buying a bot. It doesn't matter if it's on the bottom of your RFP. It's the same kind of scenario, right? We're clearly washing everything into this category. But that said, I think the key for everybody in here, we've been talking about since Monday, business outcomes, right? It's just about business outcomes. So let's, let's go from the, we're cloud, we're washing everything into AI to talking about some business outcomes. It's gonna get harder as we go, right? I'm gonna start that down at the end with Kareem. We're gonna come this way, obviously. Sorry, you went first, I'm gonna go to that end. But give us 
a real world use case in the last 12 months, something that you worked on with a prospect, maybe it's somebody here, maybe it's not, doesn't matter, but give us a customer use case where we really are using AI to accomplish something, a business outcome that we can sink our teeth into as strategists in the field. Yeah, sure. So I actually have two use cases. One is related to customer experience. So when we talk about customer experience, it's really about enhancing the agent experience, but there is also the technology that we can provide, you know, to replace standard IVR. So, you know, it's a love-hate relationship with IVR. Some people love it, others hate it. The voice bot technology are here to help and, and guide customers very simple to the right agent. So one of our customers has implemented voice bot technology to handle peak periods. So they had a huge amount of calls uh, during uh, summer and uh, during winter. And they had to hire people for a short amount of time. So training uh, you know, and having the right people was very difficult. And that was a really good use case for them to be able to handle high volume, low value calls. So that's a very uh, great use case. The second one is more related to sales team. So I know when we, when we speak about contact center, it's more around uh, inbound journey. But when you talk to sales team, there is a lot of value to be able to position AI. So one of our customers actually implemented advanced speech analytics to detect the, um, all the conversation between their customers and their agents. And they were able to identify, that's actually an insurance company, that some of their agents or sales rep were just changing one word in the conversation and had an increase in terms of 20% of selling. They were not saying, do you want to buy our insurance policy? They were saying, do you want to invest in our insurance policy? And just this small change had an impact in terms of the sales, because people are willing to invest in themselves instead of buying something. So that was two real use cases that we have seen in the last um, six months. Certainly really good examples. And we're going to come the rest of the way. I changed the slide, by the way. But I felt like it was appropriate for the rest of this conversation. Earlier in Dom's panel, we had talked about the fact that CIOs, I think it was 65% of CIOs now believe they have revenue generation responsibility in a business. Kind of interesting. I just wanted to tie that into, Kareem, to what you were saying. It'll probably tie into the rest of the conversations as well. So give us some real world examples. Yeah, so as we, as we think about contact centers, right, which is where a lot of the AI conversations start, um, one of the things that comes up is, how can I use speech analytics, right? How can I use that to, to justify this investment that I'm gonna make? In, in a contact center, most of your dollars go towards training your agents. Um, you know, the biggest investment you have is the agent's salary. So what we see a lot, whether it's real time or whether it's post call, give me, let's leverage speech analytics so you can give me examples of calls that have completely gone off the rails, right? I wanna see the train wrecks so that I can go in and, and coach those agents more effectively as opposed to, oh yeah, we randomly monitor 10 calls a month. Like, so what, yeah. right? If you, we can man, monitor every single interaction, not just the calls, but the, the chats, the emails, I can tell you if this guy sounds pissed off, and I can use that to go back and coach my agents to say, this is how you should handle this. Because as those agents' jobs are getting more and more complex, sure. we need to remove every barrier that we can, and that's a great application for AI to do that. There's does that ROI live on both sides of the balance sheet, on the cost containment side and on the revenue generation side to some extent? It depends who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean, it, it, when you're talking to a contact center manager, it's, it, the ROI is right there. It's super easy to build. Sure. When you're talking to a chief marketing officer or a CFO, maybe we're talking strategically not just about training the agents, but hey, let's also start mining voice of the customer trends because okay. now this goes beyond just the contact center. If you're trying to trying to justify the cost of that, let's take it out of the contact center discussion yep. if we can. Okay, now give us a customer example, give us a, a use case. Sure, so I'll do a, uh, we have a large shipping company north of the border that was looking for containment issues for order tracking. And so we started talking with them about kind of a uh, voice enabled self service solution. And they, they kind of balked at the initial uh, price point, but we did some ROI modeling and, and we started with a kind of a, we talked about POC here a lot. It wasn't necessarily POC, but it was a, a little bit of a smaller test, test uh, balloon. What we found, what they found, um, was that we went to a 95% containment rate for okay. customers that were coming in either, you know, via voice or traditionally talk to an agent or other means. Um, and so not only did that completely free up their, their actual agents, uh, it cut down their monthly toll bills significantly. And in fact, the ROI models that we ran for them ended up being about one-fifth of the actual savings that they were realizing. And from that, they have significantly increased the, um, the usage 
uh, agreement. We put everything on, on agreements, but usage agreement to the point where it is a, a very lucrative deal for us and the customer is thrilled, their customers are happier. Um, so that was probably the best use case that we've had in the last few months. It's a good one. I mean, I, th I think we have a tendency to think because a lot of these, you know, the first place that our strategists probably think when somebody says AI is they're thinking about the contact center and the agent, right? That's a really interesting thing. You That was about call avoidance in a lot of ways, right? Again, showing up on the financials of the business, the job of the, C, you know, of the CIO on a go forward basis. Super interesting. That's all about calls that they didn't get, you know, into the contacts and a really good example. Give us one. Yeah, um, just in, in talking, like we, we've talked a lot about contact center and, and those use cases for, for this. I think the one, the deal that Rob and, and Guy spoke about um, a health, in the healthcare vertical where there was a, there's a bunch of surgeons, right? And somebody breaks their leg or breaks their hand skiing and they want, they come in and they call an agent. Well, you're, you're calling into an agent that's got a schedule for 20, 30, 40 doctors, but basically using keyword search and the keywords that are being presented can figure out which doctor they need to schedule with and then go right to not sending them to somebody else. They can say, oh, you need to go with Dr. Kolbuck and we'll, we're gonna send you right over to that um, doctor for scheduling or I'm gonna schedule it for you right here. So using keyword searches to kind of surface the, the where they need to go and route the call appropriately, that's one of them. I'll say a second one really quick, which is um, for a, a company, we represent a large uh, boot company and they were getting lots of calls into their, their sales center where people were requesting square-toed boots and they didn't make a square-toed boot. So they found out from looking through all their analytics, all their keyword search, the words that, that square-toed boot was coming up, you know, 30, 40% of the time, so much so that they changed their manufacturing and actually offered a square-toed boot. So Incredible. it impacted the revenue for the company and to give the customers what they wanted. Quick question on your first example. Yeah. Um, last couple, compliance has dribbled up a couple times today. Um, that's healthcare. You're speaking into the dystopian robot telling them what you broke your arm and it's, give, it's putting you to a call. Is there a compliance uh, implication to that application? Can you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah, there, there is. And, and typically, if you're inbound calling, you're going you're gonna to be, they're, they're not necessarily speaking that. They're, they're telling the agent what their problem is okay. in, in this right. scenario. So they've already agreed to that they're, gonna, they're being recorded and, and that stuff. So Got it. that takes that off the shelf. Got it. Super interesting. You have an example for us, Al? Yeah, I'll give an example of an agent assist scenario where AI helps agents actually solve customers' problems faster. So this is a retailer, one of our customers, and <clears throat> they sell a lot of products, and their agents can't be specialists in products, so they're generalists. So they have a lot of products they're dealing with. When the customer calls in, we use speech analytics to be able to determine not only what the customer's asking, but the, what the customer really is looking for. So that's customer intent. Really important, because that helps the agent hone in on exactly what the customer wants. It, it reaches into a knowledge base, there's knowledge management, actually looks up specific information on what the customer wants and provides them not only with that specific information, not a big knowledge base article, specific information along with next best, act next best actions to take in order to get that customer's situation resolved quickly. So that does a few things. One is it allows the agent to do their job better. It's just easier for them. So it's, it's much better from a work environment for agents, agent retention. Um, it's easier for the customer. They get their answers uh, quickly. And that's all they want, really, is to get their answers quickly and be done. And third is it actually helps in terms of saving cost from a customer perspective because the same agents can actually handle more calls because they're less, taking less time to answer those calls. Makes sense. A lot of uh, your examples, were everybody's examples, were based on kind of where there was conversation. Maybe it was an IVR, maybe it was in a recording, was grabbing keywords and, and you know, doing effectively equations with artificial intelligence. You mentioned intent. Can you define, and anybody can jump on this, beyond you know, speech recognition and then using that, can you, can you tell us where we are in terms of being able to capture intent in audio that's actionable right now? Um, and just, first of all, we should probably explain, if you want to at the beginning of your answer, what intent is to maybe some of the folks in the room when we talk about that, as opposed to just, you know, speech analytics, you know, uh, text to speech, speech to text, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can give you a simple example. So really intent is, so when a customer's calling in sometimes, and we, do, we all do this as human beings, right? A lot of times we're calling in, or we're, ca we're talking to someone, and we're trying to express what we're thinking, we're trying to express what we're actually, what we actually want. 
Um, so I'll, get, I'll give it a simple example. It's kind of a silly example, but it kind of makes sense, I hopefully. Um, so when I, when I go to a hardware store, I say, I need, a, I need to buy a drill. Why do you need to buy a drill? Well, the real reason I want to buy a drill is I'm trying to put a hole in the wall. That's what I want to do. That's my intent, right? So determining that and saying, okay, you want to put a hole in the wall, so you need a drill, but you need all these other things to make sure the hole is at the right place, it's right in the middle of the wall, and, and et cetera. So that, it's a simple kind of silly example just to kind of illustrate yeah. it, but this is essentially what intent means. It's knowing exactly what they want, not necessarily what they're, they're saying, I'm looking for a drill. Well, why do you want the drill? I want it because I want to drill a hole or a set of holes. Got it. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, if I can add on top of that, I think it's a really important concept because one of the first questions we get from customers um, is what's the accuracy of your AI tool? Mm -hmm. And they expect to hear 100%. You never hit 100%. And that's why intent is so important. Like, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, voicebot and chatbot technology. Think of, like, voicebot in a global context, like speaking different languages with different you know, accent. I mean, I have, I'm a good example. I have a really strong French accent. Trust me, I've been uh, using some voice bot technology. <laughs> and when you go into loop because the voice bot doesn't understand, that's really frustrating. I think the idea is really to, to think about it of intent. You never get 100% of accuracy, but if you understand why the customer is calling, that's when you can really help him or her. Yeah. And it's it, like, it's the difference between spotting a keyword and spotting a phrase, right? 100%. Context is super, super important. You got it. So your AI has to be, or I shouldn't say your AI has to be too. You, you have to have a system that's going to be looking at not just a keyword. Because, and a great example is there's a difference between you're fired and I'm fired up. But if all you're looking for is the word fired, you're going to get a whole lot of examples that are not relevant. Yeah. Right? So context is super important. In context is the key. Anybody else care to comment on kind of context and intent at this point, or did we nail it? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's just focus on that for a minute because one of the things, all right, now, now everybody's wheels are spinning. They're like, all right, we got, we understand that we can transcribe conversations to look for keywords. We understand that we can potentially establish intent. Intent requires context, right? What the context center manager, since we're picking on that, is now thinking from an AI perspective is they're like, hmm, is my context center solution smart enough to alert a supervisor when somebody's getting in trouble, right? And real world reporting in AI you need context, but context requires time, right? So real time, kind of challenging. Can you guys speak to just how maybe you might address that requirement we just talked about and how you kind of manage context, time, and get into a result for somebody? Yeah, I'll take that to start. I mean, what we, what we do today, we're looking for sure at phrases and, yeah. and what those are being. Now, typically when you're, you're in a call and the supervisor is whether they're listening to the call, whether they're monitoring the call, whether they're watching a live transcription of the call, there we can look for certain phrases like, I want to cancel service, right? That's going to alert a supervisor to maybe, hey, I got to look at this call, I got to see what's going on in the call. Or, you know, um, they start getting really angry, giving, giving a manager alert in real time so they know to, to jump into that call. So. To your point, it's all about the phrasing. It's not necessarily just a keyword because the keyword doesn't give you the full context. If you are alerting, do you start big and work back or do you start small and work out, right? Because we've, we've had a lot of security conversations. I mean, I think on Mike's panel, they were talking about false positives as an example. Like the minute you turn that on and you don't have kind of context, do you, what would you do? Start small and go big in terms of what you're trying to be alerted on or go the opposite route? Anybody want to jump on that? I, I, my approach is, Think about, if, if you want to be alerted in real time, yeah. right? you need to think about as a manager, what is your expected action? Are you going to drop everything and go jump, jump on a call, call yeah. because this guy's struggling? Probably not, Probably not. right? So uh, my, my thought would be start small, but start not with the notion that it should be escalated to human intervention, right? Start with the notion that if there is a keyword or something that pops out that, that maybe is flagged, the option should be give the agent the, the toolkit on screen to make the next step. Because there's no way that supervisors are going to say, yeah, I'm going to drop everything every time a red flag happens on a call. That's going to be most of your interactions. Right? 100%. Yeah. Agree 100% with that, by the way. It starts with the agent, giving them the cues and tools they need to answer. And then if it needs to be escalated, there's an inflection point where it gets escalated to yeah. a supervisor. That's when the supervisor gets involved. Well, and to that point, not to add on, but a lot of it goes back to, in the context center, how it helps even the agent experience. Because when they have the tools, 
to help take care of the client, they're happier. Yep. And that leads to customer, you know, that leads to both the agent experience and customer experience being higher. Being Got higher. it. We focus a lot on, on the contact center itself, a lot on the agent experience. That's great, given all, what all of your companies do. I, I understand that we, that we went there. Anybody care to throw a couple customer examples of AI in the real world that's not in the contact center right now to get their head around it for, for some of our strategists? Yeah, may maybe one example. So we are working with a retail company. Um, so they have like amazing um, you know, use cases. So not directly related to contact centers, but I think they had a really a, a great approach because the first thing that they did is that they really had a, a very uh, high level strategy around AI for every department in their company. They didn't focus, oh, let's focus on AI for, con uh, for customer service or for sales team. It was really a global approach. And the, the example that we've seen was really around marketing, actually, being able to customize the page with the right product when a customer goes to a website multiple times. Mm -hmm. So it's not a standard uh, pages. It's really dynamic based on the preference of the previous you know, product that they have visited in the past. So I thought that was a really great use case about how they could bring AI to marketing, uh, for example. Yeah, hang on one second. Wait, you, got, you were going to go? Yeah, I was just going to quickly bring up, you know, from a from a selling perspective, right? Those are those are different users. Those are those are users that want can va get value from the contact center functionality. You talk about real time assist. You talk about um, searching databases and things like that. So we absolutely have customers out there that that are using the sales tools within the, the Dialpad application to enable their sellers so that when they're on a sales call and the competition's brought up, they have key you know, points to yeah. check off, right? You look at, at playbooks and things like that where they, did they ask the customer's name? Did they talk about price? Did they do these things and kind of checking those things off? So it is something that is actively being done today. Jason, you were... Yeah, I was going to say, we have a, a retail organization in the UK that we work with, and I thought this was a lot of work, but kind of interesting as well. So they take um, not only their marketing and their web-based interactions, but each of their, their people in their stores have handheld devices. And when they're talking with customers, if they need it, they have a request, they, they're, they're analyzing the requests that are being made. Mm -hmm. And they're using that to determine where to put product, yep. um, whether it be in the front of the store, whether they need to move something around. So it's just, it's, a, it's kind of a big picture thing but they're using all those kind of conversations, interactions, and searches to better kind of orchestrate how to take care of what their customers are looking for. Got it. Jeff, were you going to add something there? Yeah, um, this probably is going to resonate with everybody in this room. Rather than having a screen pop into Salesforce, if somebody calls in to, a, to one of you guys, rather than having Salesforce pop up, maybe it should be on your mobile device, and we're building this here at 8 Byte right now, it would be not just Salesforce, but here is the last opportunity that you worked on with this person, or the current opportunity, or the one you were just emailing about five minutes ago, so when they call in, that's the one that pops to the top of the list. Let's, let's let context in our job dictate what AI is gonna deliver us when we're trying to handle interactions that are not context center oriented. Got it, so I have one last question before we open it up to see if anybody has any questions here. Um, and it's really about how we engage, right? Because I, I, we, we had the conversation about business outcomes. Customers are saying, you know, I want to do X. If you look at this slide right now, you know, driving revenue through, CIOs are saying the number one, it's a little bit hard to see for you guys up here, but the number one thing they're focusing on on the revenue side of the business is around automation. It's around, so, and they have business users in the business coming to them, asking them questions. And then they're going to our strategists. It's a pretty heady topic, right? How do you recommend they approach do you have a solution for something like this? Well, what should they do? Is it just an engagement thing? Come to your companies, come to RSE, say, this is the thing we're trying to solve. How, how best they get started, do you think? I think it's exactome that, right? Okay. Come to us, come to your channel manager, um, engage your SE. Um, we, can, we can solve a lot of these problems with, with yep. AI. Yeah, we go, we, same thing. We go through a detailed discoveries. We can help all our partners go through a detailed discovery session with the customer yep. to learn exactly what business outcomes they're looking for and you know, what problems they're trying to solve. Fantastic. And that's really what you use as a basis to determine what AI Different is. Different for anybody else, same answer? <laughs> ditto, no. Okay, same. that's fine, yeah. If same. the answer is ditto, it's really good, the answer is ditto. Is Brendan Strain in the room anywhere? Where is he? Yeah, you call that guy. Call that guy right back there too. Make sure you reach out to him. He knows where everybody is. He can answer these questions. He loves conversations about robots and sci-fi also, so you can get him jamming on that. He helped design some of these slides. We're just opening it up real quick. Any questions from the audience? I know this is between you and lunch, but let's throw it out there. Real quick, so with voice contact centers, we've talked a lot, but we haven't talked about text and SMS. With the change of the TCR 10 DLC, 
One, do you know of any limitations that someone says, hey, we've got a monopoly on the patent or intellectual property side of that that makes us the only guys that can do it? I'm just trying to dispel that. Um, and then two, with campaign registries getting so, you know, regulatory compliant but without FCC regulation, you know, what do you see as the limits in this space? Well, who's jumping on that? Well, I could start. So in an inbound scenario where you're starting a chat conversation with a company, this doesn't, A2P10 DLC doesn't really come into effect. It's really when you're doing outbound outreach, you're doing either proactive outreach um, or you're launching, like you said, a campaign. And, and there are different rules for, for, for the new regulations around, you know, how to register based on the number of texts you send out in a day. Um, it's a complex process. There's a reason why it was implemented. We all know why it was implemented. It was a good idea. Um, but it does create a challenge for a lot of vendors. I think a lot of vendors like ourselves have addressed that uh, in terms of proactive engagement. So we have a solution, we have a process in place for that. And it's really just getting together with the vendor to understand how that gets implemented from a customer perspective. Thank you. Um, one quick question, and I don't want to be between us and lunch, and, and more importantly, me and lunch. So just um, <laughs> when this topic of kind of things you can automate, right, it comes up all the time. And one of the things I think one of the mistakes. All right, there we go. One of the mistakes I see customers make is they try to like boil the ocean. Like we're all we're trying to do all this stuff, right? And one of the recommendations I always try to give them is like, hey, let's let's take the the most full, lowest hanging fruit. Let's get that done first, and then let's kind of work at this as a phased approach. And I guess the question I have for you guys with that in mind is, what would be really helpful for everyone here? is kind of by vertical here are the types of things that the healthcare company did this. Here's what a financial company did, right? Because what our customers are typically looking for is that. They're like saying, what have other people done like us that they were successful? And how did they do it? Yeah, speak loudly. Yeah. Do you guys have that available? If you don't have it available, go tell product management to make it available. But it, it is one of the biggest things. And that's what they lean on us a lot for because we have a lot of experience in the space. And I'll say, hey, here's what other customers like you have done. But I think you guys could help all of us do that right easier. So, Yeah, I think for especially for the verticals, uh, financial, healthcare, retail, uh, whatever the case may be, there's, there's great use cases for those things. I, I will say real quickly, like I know financials a pretty simple one to look at a lot of type of AI features and you call it like simple calling in to get your banking information making transactions I will say real quickly funny story is we had a customer recently most of their clients are are, are older they wanted nothing to do with I mean our teams try and this is a, this is a selling thing our teams tried to sell technology and they threw them out because they weren't listening to what their clients wanted um, so it's a little bit of the opposite like they didn't want anything to do with AI yeah. But they don't have a younger, they don't have more of a younger base that's willing to work it either. But those are some of the great, I mean, there's great use cases there for the majority of financial institutions <laughs> uh, when speaking to them. Anybody want to add anything else quickly? I, I would say irrespective of vertical, because every customer is a unique snowflake, or at least they think they are, right? Irrespective of vertical, go into the contact center, look at the transactions that they're, that they're handling, and look for the transaction code or the reason code for, those, for all those interactions, and figure out what the most prevalent interaction is. That is probably the area that the agents are most sick of, right? Because they do it 500 times a day. That's your prime target for automation. It shouldn't be everything. It should be, all right, let's take that one that's taking up 60% of my agent's time. Help desk. Help, right? <laughs> IT help yeah. desk. Yeah. IT help desk. Can you reset my password? Yeah, right? Exactly. No, I get it. Team, great panel, by the way. Can we give it up for the panel? That was a good one.